Bro, look, this is what I mean. This is what I mean. The orb continued to descend. The next sentence, what does he write? The assault continued for what seemed like eternity. This is what bad editing looks like. Good day. I hope you're having a nice day. Seven years, right? Seven years. Chapter 1, Reign of Stars. This book is by J.M. Arlen, right? Uh, it is the Crystal Keepers. It has eight ratings. Mm-hmm. Eight ratings. And also, it's got three stars out of five. Now, the author spent seven, right? I want to repeat that one more time. He spent seven years writing this book. Then the book comes out. He self-publishes the book. And... He goes on Reddit and he starts being toxic all over everyone. I made a whole video about this and you can go and check that video out. Basically, it's his Reddit meltdown and it looks something that is really straight out of a ch spoiled child's story, you know. When you have those children that are the children of a billionaire or something like that and they are super spoiled i mean how could you give me just a lamborghini for this month uh that kind of attitude because he felt entitled to sales simply because he wrote a book for seven years and apparently it's his first book and i want I'm making this video. Why am I making this video? You might say, ooh, that's because you're toxic and you just want to criticize something. No. It is simply because I want to dispel, I want to basically erase a particular narrative that is very common in media, right? And you see this all over Crystal Keepers. It is the idea of idealizing the writer who spends a lot of time writing a book the same book and expect that book uh, and you know that book is expected to be because of the time sacrifice because merely of the artist having spent so much time making the art it must be good and this narrative is idealized and it takes noobs basically people that are very new to writing and it leads them astray it basically takes them in the wrong direction like crystal keepers like jm arlen he has been taken to the wrong direction all right he has been swindled of so much of his time he basically lost not necessarily seven years but five years because a book like this if it's your first book you really only spend two years on it okay and then you move to another book and write another book and try to gain experience that way. Chapter 1. A rain of stars. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There is a chill in the air, the farmer said. His front door swung open, rattling on its hinges. It starts very good, right? It starts really good, right? This is when you realize J.M. JM Arlen, like any writer who has really spent some time writing prose, his prose is not bad. His prose is clean. And you see, this video is not just a criticism of J.M. Arlen and his actions. It's just his writing. And I will say that his prose, from this moment onward, it actually keeps a certain quality. It is overwritten in some places, but it keeps a certain quality, and it never sacrifices that quality. But why am I here, therefore? I am here simply to point out the, 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 the editing. Because you see, this is why you should write a lot of books and try to edit those books early on. When you start out, just write books and edit those books because this is what you end up with. He's going to essentially repeat and repeat and repeat the same information. And the beginning of this book is really badly structured. It is just badly structured and I'll explain to you in a bit. Winter is coming, his wife replied. There was a frost on the grass this morning as the sun rose. That's to be expected, the farmer looked out across uh, Talmoria, across his peaceful island. There he could see a valley of tall mountains and snowy peaks, the land carved into sections by toothy rocks, and plates stabbing up from the skin of the earth's crust. As you can see, this is really not terrible prose. Again, like, no one is going to basically give him three out of five because of this prose. Tall grass and high gorges stretched away before him like a green ocean, jagged and rooted with wild forests and broken, you know, boulders. This is, this is flat out beautiful, okay? It's really, really clean, right? The problem is the editing. Because prose doesn't make a good book. 
What makes good book is developmental editing. And this is what I mean. When a new writer starts out, like J.M. Arlen, seven years ago, his first instinct was to idealize a stupid narrative, a brainless narrative that society peddles to everybody. And it is basically the artist who gives a time sacrifice. And because he sacrificed so much, the art therefore must be good. No. Good art is good art. Okay? It really, really, up beyond a certain point, doesn't have much to do with time. Trailing in its wake with a golden blaze of light. Come outside. He calls, you know, for his wife. And she comes outside. And eventually these things start falling, really. These, you know, crystals start falling from the sky. I'm giving you a summary, right? Because I really have to. Because, again, this is why this is, have, this, this is bad editing. Because he will spend so long explaining why these crystals are really, really falling. And this is indicative of his bad editing. Terrible, terrible developmental editing. The sky had come to life with color as the stars sparked and hissed. Hmm. I don't know about hissed. Uh, above, like a rain of sput sputtering flame, thousands of burning orbs dashed across the sky, some trail shattering mid-air, bursting into clouds of glowing dust and hazy light, while others went further, falling all the way to the earth's surface. And when they hit the ground, a magnificent boom, magnificent, you know, maybe use it something else, like a shattering boom, anyway, would fall, would follow, shaking the island to its core. All right. But you see, this is where the problems begin for him. This is where he starts falling apart as a writer. Because, as you can see, it took, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven major paragraphs forget about the small paragraphs right forget about small paragraphs it took 11 major paragraphs right for us to reach a point where the the freaking um you know uh, uh crystals had actually fallen okay that's what the crystal keepers refers to this is like some sort of uh it, it works with the magic system okay um and so fundamentally speaking that is really too long he spent all that time trying to do what establish what Establish the peaceful island and over and over and over, I really spared you the pain, over and over and over, describe the crystals and what they look like. As if he, he's scared, we might not understand what falling crystals look like, especially when he put them on the freaking cover of the book. All right. The farmer, the farmer had no answers to give. And then another paragraph. This is the 13th paragraph. The orbs continued to descend, smashing into land, um, where there was island to be, to, where, the, where there was land to smash into. The assault continued what felt like eternity. Bro, look, this is what I mean. This is what I mean. The orb continued to descend. The next sentence, what does he write? The assault continued for what seemed like eternity. This is what bad editing looks like. See, this is why when you start out as a writer, you should write many books rather than spend seven years idealizing a stupid, brainless narrative, okay? Because facts remain to be facts. He is a terrible editor because he just wrote one book for so long until the shaking in the ground had grown so intense the farmer wondered if the land beneath him had begun to boil. Bro, you described before what? What did you describe before? Before you described shaking the island to its core. Now you are describing the island shaking again until the shaking in the ground. Like, we understand what shaking is. Magnificent boom. Again, you, this is so redundant. It's such bad editing. And I was so pissed off when I saw this because he went to Reddit proclaiming so cocky. I should be successful, right? And he said, I'm not asking for millions of copies sold. I'm asking for at least a thousand copies. Bro, this is not worthy of being published. Your prose is okay. Again, look at me. Like, I'm not really saying that his prose is bad. I've never claimed that. It is repetitive, yeah, but repet repetition of prose, even though it's good prose on its own, it stands, 
each sentence stands on its own, good repetitive prose is indicative not of bad prose, but of bad editing. Okay? So, not far away, there was a scream of light. Scream of light? I don't know about that. Um, a gleam, right? A glint, a streak, a streak of light. I, I found three synonyms right there. Then an explosion of sparks and dirt erupted. Okay, so shaking, magnificent boom, erupted, raining debris. We get it. The, sur the, the crystals are really, really raining. I, I, hailstorm. Oh my God, bro, look at this. Raining debris down across the farmer's home. Like a hailstorm. You said a, a clap of thunder. Okay, I really understand that the island is under siege. I think the farmer should start moving by now. Okay, finally the farmer starts moving. But it's too late. He should have started moving 20... Uh, this is, by the way, 20 paragraphs in. I, I counted before, you know, I prepared before I filmed uh, all of this. Okay, so the farmer, this is 20th paragraph. So the farmer rose in the 20th paragraph, escaping the grip of his, uh, the grip of his wife. The world was as it had been before, except now there were no crickets, no wolves, no smells of fresh pine. We get it. We get it. We get it. <laughs> this is what I mean. This is how to not write a book. And I hope I'm not being an, uh, you know, an asshole. I really, really don't hope, uh, I hope I'm not being an asshole. Because, again, I hope I'm just being clear, all right? And I'll not repeat myself. And you see, I'll be kind enough to finish it there, okay? By the way, the, 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 this book, the, the bad editing continues. There, is, there, there are three false beginnings, okay? There are three false beginnings in this story. You should not have... One false beginning. Uh, remember, remember, never forget this, right? One false beginning is bad. The beginning should be the beginning. Because the, that's when the audience gives you most faith. When do you give as a reader? When do you give the, re the writer the most faith? You give the writer the most faith. Oh my God, look at all of this waste. Anyway, you give them the most faith here. Chapter 1, Reign of Stars. There, there is a chill in the air. The farmer said, his front door swung open, rattling on its hinges. That's good prose, by the way. I really want to emphasize that. It's good prose. Um, you know, rattling on its hinges. I mean, I can imagine with that. It's, it's good. It's good. It's very good. But keep in mind, this is when you have most faith as a writer. What do you do? You utilize it effectively. Even stories like, for example, the Stormlar Archive will have a huge prologue. But it's not a false beginning, is it? The prologue of Stormlight Archive, even though it's huge, even though it's like 12,000 words, but it's not a false beginning, is it? And, and, and this chapter, right? So, you know, it, it really, really goes on. Yeah, I mean, it never stops. Eventually, you have this, this boss, right? 1,000 years of tomorrow crept by. This is a time skip of 1,000 years. And the world changed drastically within that time. Wars were fought, blah, 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 right? This is all world building. You would think this is the beginning of the story now, right? But it's not. This chapter, chapter two, right? So chapter one ends with, um, in a land that had been forgotten, right? And so this story began on a dark and cloudless night in a land that had been forgotten. So, you know, the farmer, forget about that guy. Chapter two, an unlikely thief. And so Veronica, you would think, uh, sorry, sorry for all the noise. You would think this is the beginning. Uh, no, it isn't. Because you see, it, it really, really, really continues. The actual story begins, the actual story begins, the city of gold and glass. Um, toward the end, to, like, this is not also the chapter. Chapter four, right? Chapter four is really, really, when the story actually picks up speed. Now, how many words to chapter four? How many pages to chapter four? That is a significant number of missed pages. Okay, there's a lot of noise in the house, so I'm gonna stop recording, but I hope you understand what I'm talking about. You can help me cross the beacons, Manny remembered asking. No, a voice had responded, under them. It was a woman and her son, Manny remembered. The woman was the one who spoke, what were their names? Asher and Frodan. Manny tried hard to concentrate, 
on who they were, wondering why they had helped her get to the north in the first place. Anyhow, so I, I really hope you understand how bad editing is a problem that writers will face early on. And it will, it will, by the way, it will last longer. It will last way longer, as you can see here. It will last way longer than the writer's bad prose phase, right? So you'll, you'll write bad prose and have bad editing in the beginning. Then you'll have good prose and still have bad editing. Okay. Uh, this is why you have to hire someone to help you edit your book, but you cannot hire someone to help you write your prose because guess what? That's plagiarism or ghostwriting okay it's something entirely different uh, and i hope you took something from this video have a nice day bye tell me what you think down in the comments below